right, folks, Ariel over here at Finith on a little bit of a snowy day. It's kind of flurrying off and on, then every now and then the sun pops out. So if you see some white stuff in the air, that is snow. It's chilly out here. Today, I wanted to talk real quick about a little more about composting. I recently did a video about using my finished mature compost on my garden. Uh, to it's, it's on there now. Well, I've got a tiny bit of one bed left to finish. Uh, it's almost all on there now. And that's just mulching and um, fertilizing and feeding my soil for the next year because everything I eat out of my garden, like a you know, carrot or cabbage or broccoli or strawberry or whatever, is taking something out and I'm taking some of those nutrients into my body and so they're not in the soil anymore because this stuff isn't like a magic trick. It's all made out of something that comes from somewhere. So when I take it in, that stuff's no longer in the soil. So I've used my finished compost, which was in this bin, which now looks almost completely empty, um, up. And I just, a lot of people had a lot of questions about compost, so I wanted to show you just what I actually do before it's all finished and looks like nice crumbly black soil. This is not complicated. If you, I mentioned this before, if you guys want to make the absolute best compost with the most perfect nutrient ratio in the fastest possible amount of time, there are all kinds of great info out there on how to do that. And you can, and I'm not discouraging that. I simply don't take the time to do that myself. This is what I do. I have two bins here. I'd really like to have three. I've just never got around to putting up a third one. They're made out of pallets. Anybody, I mean, you can do them this way with no even carpentry skills. I wanted to be able to easily move them. And at the time I didn't have a, you know, screwdriver or anything like that. I do now, but um, I just put them together with these giant zip ties you can see right here. Free pallets, lots and lots of places give them away. And, one bag of zip ties that cost me a couple bucks and I have my two compost bins and they're back here the house is over there they're kind of hiding behind this brush over here that is mostly leaf bare now at this time of year and uh, this is just kind of the area where this stuff lives so what I do in this bin is all summer long I put in any veggie scraps I have anything from the kitchen ends peels anything like that any weeds that I might pull out of the garden or anywhere anything I trim back or cut off tops of things like carrots. Um, occasionally if I rake up something in the yard, I usually do that first thing in the spring. There's always some just debris and snow mold and stuff left from the year. And it just piles up in here. Most of the, the pile gets added right at the end of the year. Really is desperately wanting a, uh, a stick throw. Okay. Um, so that only brings it up to like, you know, somewhere in here. Then at this time of year is when I have a lot of stuff. I've pulled the rest of the things out of the garden. Everything is frozen. I clean up some of that just to keep myself from having a huge, you know, rodent infestation moving into nice houses created by dying foliage or dead foliage over the winter. Um, I have a little bit of, a little bit of uh, this darker material on top was a few things I picked out of the older bin where there was a bigger twig or something in it that hadn't quite fully broken down, so I just pitched it back over into this pile to, uh, you know, have another year. Other things that I add, um, so it's mostly stuff like that, and I'm cleaning up some of the rest of, the, like, the flowers around the house that were all beautiful until not too long ago. They're all very frozen now. Um, so trimmings like this go in here. This is the time of year where there's a lot of that. A little bit of wood ash. Again, just at this time of year through the winter, I keep it all in my big metal can, which you'll be seeing shortly, that's outside the house, it's handy. I store it up in there all year and it's really snowing now. <laughs> and use it for melting snow in the spring and that goes into the garden and such as well. But right at this time of year where I don't quite need that can yet, I do usually put a couple little buckets of, of ash from the fireplace in here. The charcoal and such in there adds a little bit of like a, a hotel space for little bacteria because of all the pores in the charcoal. I do stuff like this. I've got a friend who lives not too far from me who just keeps a bucket outside their door and puts their um, their kitchen and veggie scraps in it. They, unlike me, like things like coffee. So there's coffee grounds. What else is in here? Looks like eggshells, uh, corn husks, um, you know, carrot ends, onion peels, all that kind of thing. And every couple of weeks I swing by and grab their bucket and uh, come dump it in my compost because they don't garden and so they don't have a, a reason for the compost and so on. So I add some of that stuff. Um, I add all that stuff from my house as well, the things that I have. And then also very occasionally, you know that most of the summer I use my um, 
urine from my composting toilet to, uh, in a diluted form to fertilize and raise the nitrogen levels in my everything I'm growing. This time of year, nothing's growing anymore. So I will take a couple buckets. This isn't ever a whole lot per year and just add an entire few gallons of urine right into my compost pile. This helps a little bit with getting it really going and cooking at this time of year when I've added this much, you know, volume of material. And then if you're gonna ask, what do I do with the urine the rest of the winter? Cause this gets all buried under snow. I use it to fertilize trees and shrubbery and, and stuff like that around the yard through the winter, go back to using it in the garden in the summer. But in between a few buckets go in here, raises the nitrogen level, which makes things really nice and hot. Um, as far as we want this compost pile to heat up and break down. There's also a little bit of cardboard in here. If I have like some plain cardboard or paper um, that I don't have any other use for. Okay. Um, so all that stuff goes in here. I get a lot of questions and I see a lot of info about what you can and can't put in a compost pile. If it can break down like it came from anything organic, it was born, it hatched, it grew up out of the dirt. Those things can all compost. I do not compost meat products because I don't have a big enough pile to get hot enough to break that down efficiently. That is possible to do, probably not ideal for most home gardeners. And I don't want meat products in here just because of the um, massive amount of predators in my area and I don't want to attract them to near my house. Um, but that is possible just for reference. And then I see lots of info about you can't put onions and garlic scraps in your compost or you can't put orange or citrus peels in your compost and worms don't like this and worms don't like that and this won't break down and guys if you want to go with that go for it here's my personal experience as somebody who's been using and making compost for well, i started doing this stuff as a kid so a lot of years several decades um <laughs> everything breaks down unless you put in like plastic don't put in plastic Human hair doesn't break down very well, um, but just about anything else I've ever found does break down. My worms have not complained. When I still lived in an apartment in town, and if I had a good place to do this, I would show you how a, a worm bin or a vermicomposting bin works. Because if you don't have a yard where you have a, a place to build a, a bin like this, and mine doesn't look great, you can't really see it because of all the brush in front of it. If you live in a backyard where you're gonna have neighbors look over the fence, just don't use the palettes that are painted, you know, funny colors like this. That's just the ones I got for free. Use nicer looking palettes and grow a rose bush up, but they'll think it's just a rose trellis and nobody's going to complain about your compost pile because they won't even see it or whatever kind of bush or vine or whatever grows and is pretty in your area. And it'll look attractive and I highly doubt anybody will complain. But if you don't have that kind of space and can't do that kind of thing, if you just have a, a shed, a garage, a mudroom, any little extra space like that, which I don't really have in my house right now, where it's going to stay above freezing and not get blistering hot, you can compost worms in a bucket just like this. You can almost always get five gallon buckets for free from various places like restaurants get a lot of food in in them. And uh, they're often, you know, they're constantly getting more food in. So they're constantly giving buckets away. So there's, you're generally great sources for getting those for free. All you do is you drill a couple holes in it, put in some shredded newspaper or something like that in the bottom to kind of soak up moisture. It's good to have a pan or something under it because if you put a lot of really juicy stuff in, it will um, le leach a little juice out the bottom at times. Get some worms either by digging them up in the garden or like Jim's Red Worm Farm, I think is the, the most popular place. I've had great experiences dealing with them over the years. You can buy their stuff on Amazon or directly from their website. Put some worms in there and just start putting in whatever you have, like your eggshells and your banana peels and your cabbage ends and your whatever. They eat it all. I did this when I lived in an apartment uh, before moving into my tiny house. And I did this for years. I had two buckets going because I cook a lot. And so I'd put my scraps in one until I got up to the top. And I did keep a lid on it. That can be handy just to keep fruit flies from buzzing around it, especially if you live somewhere warmer. Um, that keeps them out. But you do have to have some holes for ventilation. You don't want airtight container. But if you seal the top, you won't get fruit flies or anything. So I'd open the lid, dump my scraps in till my one bucket was full. Then I'd just leave it sit and I'd start filling up my other bucket, which was sitting right beside it. By the time that got back to the top, the worms would have digested almost everything in my first bucket. And I'd go back to adding in that one. And by the time that got full, I could go back to the, the other one and so on. And my worms ate everything. All these things people say, oh, worms don't like this. And this will kill your worms. and They won't eat this. I don't know, guys, maybe if you have like 
50 pounds of orange peels all at once or 100 pounds of just onion and they've got nothing else to eat, maybe worms won't eat that, I don't know. But I have put all of those things in there. And when it's in a controlled environment like a bucket, you can uh, you can observe them fairly closely, a little easier than it, it is to do in a, a bigger pile like this. So I know from my personal observation, my worms ate every single one of those things. They never complained about it. They reproduced prolifically. They turned it into beautiful black gold, you know, worm castings. So don't be too paranoid. I think some people get this, they like that idea, but they're too intimidated, but it's too complicated. And, and I don't know if I can do it and maybe I'll do it wrong. And I'll put, I'll put an orange peel in and it'll kill everything. That's not going to happen. <laughs> it's it just not. Things, if that did happen, imagine what a disaster our planet would be. I mean, there's all these little things from things the size of like ants and worms down to little microscopic things we can't even see without a magnifying glass that break things down. If they didn't, our whole planet would look like a garbage dump with all of the detritus just building up. So this works just great. I just pile everything and... Uh, this pile is about to get a whole lot bigger <laughs> for a minute. It's probably going to go up to like here and pile it out to the edges because I have some more dead stuff around the house I want to clean up. And then it's basically not going to be touched all winter. It's going to sit here under the snow. Things compost much slower when it is cold because all that microbial activity and such does slow down. The worms kind of retreat into the heart of the pile or even down at the bottom. If it's getting really cold because they don't want to freeze, they'll come back up as soon as it warms up. Um, and this is going to sit here and it's slowly going to break down over the winter and then it's going to speed up and kind of by winter this whole pile which is about to be stacked up to here is going to be down about here I would say based on my experience it'll be about level with the top and through the summer it's going to break down a little faster the remainder of what's left to to do because it's going to uh you know be warmer and by the time I use it in my garden just like I've been using this bin worth it'll be down somewhere like here and from there down to the ground, that has been enough to cover my 11 garden beds with just a nice, you know, not a huge pile, but a nice uh, layer of compost. So I just wanted to show you guys, and let me show you what it, what it turns into. I could open my uh, garden beds, but I can also climb over my walls, and uh, <laughs> that's easier than cutting my zip ties since I never made this with a removable gate. One of these years I might get around to improving that design but that's what I have for now and I can easily hop over it as you can see. So that's how tall this pile is and what this turns into, if you didn't see the last video, is look at this beautiful, beautiful black soil. And occasionally I get a stick like that that is, you know, not quite digested. It just goes next door so it gets another year. Occasionally I got a rock in something because I have lots of rocks at my house. I do live in the Rocky Mountains. Um, I'll throw that out. but. Look at that beautiful, rich soil. It just smells like earth. There's no stinky smell. That's another thing I want to address with the composting. Does it smell? Because that's something people are worried about either for their own, you know, senses or um, their neighbors. No, a good compost pile should not smell. Everything I've dumped on top of here doesn't really have an odor. Eggshells, you know, they dry out. They don't really smell. The leaves and stuff, they dry out. If you have something stinkier, all I do is I grab my little spading fork here and I would make a, uh, a hole into the, the top of my compost here. I, I can't get too aggressive with this right now because I'll knock it all over the edges because it's uh, so tall. But I'd make a hole right here in the middle. I'd dump in my stinky thing and I'd scrape my compost back up over it like that. Boom. You're not going to smell a thing. The outside of this compost doesn't smell. That seals in all the odors. It's going to break down. You sh if your compost pile stinks, you actually have a problem. It should not do that. I've never had one really stink. You know, unless you pour something that, you know, if you got whatever, something that stinks right now and you pour it right on the top, you might smell it at that moment. But um, even staying right here, I can't smell urine right now. It, you know, you might get a little faint whiff of that if it was really warm outside, which it's clearly not. But... A good compost pile should not stink. There should be no odor at all. And I've occasionally had a squirrel come and grab something like a corn cob out of here, but I've never had mice come through the pile, but mice, I've got thousands of mice everywhere in my, my area here in the woods. Um, so that's not unique to a compost pile. Uh, foxes will come by because they're hunting the mice. I get foxes in my yard almost every night, which is great. I love them here. They can eat all of the mice they want. Um, but it has never seemed to attract any kind of predator or uh, 
even just there are raccoons in this area stuff like that nothing seems really attractive to a compost pile that gets gets really working maybe if you've got a lot of critters and they're really starving and there's nothing else to eat that could possibly be a issue but even with the massive volume of wildlife i have here um, critters getting into my compost has just not been an issue other than like i said every now and then a squirrel will pull a corn cob out and chew on it and i i see it over there and that's not a big deal um but this is all i do i pile everything in here and then i just ignore it if you live somewhere really wet i mentioned this before if you if it rains all the time you may want to put a cover on this you could do that as simple as just stretching a tarp over it or a trash bag or something like that uh, because if you get too much moisture it can kind of leach all the nutrients out of your compost while it's breaking down i don't have that problem i live in a super dry climate um, every now and then in the summer i do actually put the sprinkler on here to, to get a, enough moisture to keep breaking down like we got two inches of rain in the three months of summer this year. That's how dry my climate is, two total inches. And a lot of that comes down as little sprinkles that barely make the dust wet and, and it evaporates without even really soaking into the ground. So I live in a pretty arid climate as far as that kind of thing goes. But just wanted to encourage people, don't be scared to try this. Um, it, it's really not complicated and all these rules about you can do this and you can't put that in and you can't compost this and don't ever put this in your pile and so on. If it's if it's not an object that's like plastic or made from a plastic, like a polyester fabric or something like that, it will break down in the compost pile. Just put it in. Don't worry about it. Come back a year later. I never turn my compost. I have a friend who lives in this area. She turns hers regularly. She gets beautiful compost. Looks just like mine. She gets it faster with more work. I get the same beautiful looking compost. I get it slower with less work. Totally up to you. There's no like right or wrong way to do this. Um, I don't ever worry about the perfect proportions of brown material versus green material that gets back into. You can certainly, uh, you know, make a really premium compost if you care to um, worry about all that kind of stuff. But you can make a really great compost without even thinking about it. And my goal is to use all the stuff I have, regardless of its percentages of green and, green and brown material, and turn it back into usable nutrients going back into my soil. So hopefully that answers a lot of composting questions, maybe makes you uh, less nervous about doing it, if, if that's something you found scary or intimidating. Uh, I love it when people say, well, I think it's sad that they were scared before, but I love it when people get on a video and say, oh, I thought whatever you just showed, I thought that was really complicated, so I was always scared to try it, and it's, it's actually not. I'm going to do it. Yay, great, go for it. We can all use more recycling our organic materials back into useful things rather than piling them in landfills and creating toxic messes for ourselves. So hopefully that guy encourages you folks to do some composting and make use of the stuff you have. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.